Thank you all. Uh, my name is Vikas and I welcome you to a session on network automation and analytics platform. Uh, whether you joined in today to learn something new or to understand what Cisco is offering via this platform or just because that you are locked down at home due to COVID, I can assure you that you will find these two hours interesting and a meaningful investment in your career. Um, whether you are building your network as a greenfield setup, migrating it from a brownfield environment, or simply trying to optimally operate an existing network, this service or platform can play a very important role to make life easy for all of those who are involved in the IT network and its upkeep. A single window solution that can do asset management, fault correlation, provide service assurance, manage software images across Cisco as well as non-Cisco platform, and can even replace your legacy ticketing system. You can shun off multiple and dashboards and interactions with multiple OEMs and can very easily start using this uh, outcome-based service. Uh, I would not want to steal the thunder from today's speaker, who is also a good friend, uh, Krishna Ji Panse, who is the CTO for India and SAC at Cisco. Uh, but in short, uh, I already explained what he's going to cover. Uh, additionally, uh, in the panelist, we have Sandeep and Rishikesh, who are part of the team who architected this product and contribute to deploy this in various SP and enterprise customer. We also have Sonal who joins us from the SP background and uh, her experience in that vertical would also help us to address some of the questions coming from that career grade uh, related networks. For those of you who have questions, you can post them under question and answer panel as you see in your on your screen. Um, you can cook, you can post them as and when they pop up in your mind or you can hold them till the end. Both options are fine and we will try to answer those while the session is on itself. Without further words to this, please allow me to request Krishnaji for delivering his session. Over to you, Krishnaji. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, guys. Um, so I just wanted to share this presentation. My, uh, can somebody enable my button or can we give the host access? I can actually share that. Yeah, good. I got it. I got it. Yeah. You guys see that if if you guys are able to see the presentation. Yes. Yeah. Oh, very good. So so basically, what we are covering in a, around next forty five minutes, fifty minutes is uh, uh, the what solution which we have put together to solve all our operational issues and and uh, uh, operational improve the oper operational efficiency and benefits uh, related to that um, in this kind of uh, uh, where we have a very restricted manpower and all automation has more emphasis and and so we are putting more focus on how we can automate the lot of net network related uh, tasks and that is what we are going to cover today that uh, <clears throat> how we can actually do a uh, lot of automation even correlations improvements get get detailed analytics from the network what we are what we are using which portion of network we are using very very uh, detailed way or which portion we are not using much but we have a capacity available and all that um, so we will go in detail and see what kind of solution but before that i just wanted to get some questions uh, from you guys and if you are on pc or you are on mobile phone please go to the site which is showing menti.com put the number which is 1048.72 and select your your uh, uh, you can say sector or the vertical which you are in and by that way we will come to know how many people are there from which vertical and we can actually fine tune our sessions based on that um, can you guys do that? Uh, go to the uh, menti.com, um, put the code 104872, 
and uh, select your select your verticals now somebody uh, started so we got one input um, as as you guys keep adding we will actually see the changes happening live on on the uh, presentation and that way we will make this uh, complete session very interactive i have a lot of these kind of questions further coming in which will actually help us to you will also able to see entire uh, team on a call how they see and perceive the uh, the scenarios and how uh, as a as a as a concluded um, or you can say collective mind share what how we are handling those issues right so that will also come so quickly guys if you add then then we will actually come to know so um, around 9 10 uh, guys from or the participants from ITITS organization to our FMCG some of those are from banking seven are manufacturing some other are five um, keep going guys so we will actually get the very very detailed view you guys are able to see right uh, the, the how the, the graph is changing on online and lively right Good, get a good, good, good uh, insight that what kind of a mix we have, and uh, happy to actually uh, see that that we have a. And thank you guys for putting input, so we will actually have a more detailed things, right? So another question: What kind of a network which you are handling? How many network devices which you have on a network, right? Um, people those are less than 100, 100 devices. People those are having more than 100 devices. Please select uh, the, the, the network size which you have, and then we will actually come to know what exactly we are looking at, right? There are minimum two participants here. Those are having more than one lakh or more than 10,000 devices. There are one participant which is having more than one lakh network devices. I can see those guys. Uh, also, there are 10 participants, those are having 10 to 1000. So good, good number. We have a, that is a probably a sweet spot from 10,000 to 5,000, sorry, 1000 to 5,000. And, and there are more, more than 18 participants here. Those are actually looking at those, right? So anybody else? We have around 25, 27 guys are added. So please do it quickly. So we'll actually come to know. Good. So now based on this, we have a, around uh, 12 uh, people. Those are having around 10, 100 plus 1,000 devices and around eight guys, those are having 1,000 to 5,000 devices. Uh, and look at it, that other five guys, those are having more than 5,000 devices, even till uh, more than 10,000 devices are those. We will look at it then efficiency perspective, what we should to achieve. Basically, what is automation? You should plan by automated way. As much as possible, you should design in automated way. Do your complete implementation or deployment in automated way. Bring up operate efficiency in automated way. Automotive leverages the scope of human experience. Whatever you have learned from last and whatever in Cisco we learned from last 20, 25 years, that actions expertise you put and those variables from one person to other, put that together, put the plan, design, implement, cycle into the processes, and use some machine learning algorithms, some artificial intelligence related things. So experience plus process plus capability of tools of machine learning, all that is together, we are seeing in automation. And this is a basically a philosophy of this entire uh, software, which you will actually see in some time so that's our philosophy that we should actually put this so if you look at it in a cisco services perspective we we are continuously doing from last 20 years the plan design implement operate and optimize that process we are making sure at every customer where we go that we are actually uh, strengthening these particular processes right and the experience perspective we have learn from last 20 25 years everything from and specifically from india markets that whatever we learn that is there 
and then we added some kind of cell helium capabilities some self optimization capabilities lot of analytics together and we put that together and then outcome is basically you can say automatically deploy the routine task do some self self filling capabilities doing some self self optimization capabilities and all that together right and so people are focused to do on more higher level task than the you can say daily mundane repetitive task right so that's what the idea so what, what is there and, and rushikesh you want to add you can add offers a fully integrated so it's actually fully integrated on premise solution lot of discussion we heard that my data should not go out from my premises i have a compliance restrictions banking guys will say you should not take a data out lot of other pharmaceutical guys will say data should not go out defense organization will say data should not go out and all that right so this is on premise solution all intelligence logic machine learning all algorithms everything which we have is actually at at your premise so we don't take a data out from you right completely enable the ci cd frameworks lot of places and and days you will get a new small patches new versions new intelligence new issues and resolutions of that so you will get keep continuously it's not that every six months you will get a new versions and all and that's not a story here right and it's a completely closed loop thing that you will see the problem uh, the problem will get identified there is a mechanism to work and identify the problem signature and then you can remediate that right and and solve the problems and remediation process what is the outcome we are receiving customer value efficiency reducing opex drive very faster innovation you can keep adding lot of different os features and all and the differentiation perspective fully integrated end to end life cycle and that is what i was showing this plan design implement op and optimize right everything all together in a one single one single uh, tool or one single software so that's what we are actually offering or talking here in a in a very high level i just wanted to understand you what is mean by automation for you and what problem you are trying to solve from that please go to the uh, uh, same site and you can actually type one line two lines and those will appear here so we will understand your views about how we see automation and how you see automation from your perspective You guys are able to uh, get the interface. Yeah, ease of management and compliance. Very good. Process standardization. Perfect. Anything which is repetitive task. Very good. That's what we discuss. Simple management, higher productivity, minimum downtime. Yeah, downtime is very important. Reducing manual and daily task. Correct. Reduce manual. Perfect. We got six um, ease of deployment and management. Yeah, deployment is yeah we consider that. Yeah, that we will discuss. Anything else, guys? Single click day zero one two configurations and assurance that job has got done in a fast mode. Okay. Enabling complete process without any person dependency from request to fulfillment. Perfect. Avoid human errors, yeah, and reduce human efforts. Something that reduces manpower. Perfect. Follow the process and reduce the time, and have a better error-free delivery without any human interaction. Process takes place with logic. Yeah. Good guys. I think what what we are thinking, and what you guys are.
माइक्रो सर्विसेस हॉरिजेंटली स्केलेबल कंप्लीटली यू कैन से कॉन्फिगरेबल एंड कस्टमाइजेबल फॉर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ नेटवर्क फॉर एस पी नेटवर्क फॉर एंटरप्राइज नेटवर्क फॉर फॉर यू कैन से लार्ज वैन नेटवर्क फॉर लार्ज कैंपस नेटवर्क एंड ऑल दैट तो बेसिकली वॉट वी डू इज दीज माइक्रो सर्विसेज और यू कैन से bringing the mttr down right so this, this is basically bringing the mttr down right so if you look at the inventory it creates the detail logical and physical inventory we actually bring and we will go in a detail module by module but we build the inventory and we collect the data in a in a so detail way from a network that you will have each and every details of net right what kind of device the normal whatever ems and we collected what kind of services those are running how many mac addresses those are getting attached to this particular devices how many are and so the whatever resources are there in a router or switch we are actually monitoring or collecting all those resources there in inventory and keep keep actually tracking that what outcome we get is centralized repository of all managed devices and, and the properties of that device right the value attached to that devices uh so so the value attached to the to those devices right and and say you can i in fact figure out that how many of my devices and so and so site and and equal to what is the exact value of those devices you can look at it in another way that on that site how many vlans i configured how many free ports and how many used ports there if there is a free port what is the consumption rate of per month of those ports those are actually empty on those particular routers on that particular site so by that way you will come to know in my this region or you can say south region east region west region my consumption of the uh, port of free port of 1 gig port or 100 gig port is this much per month and by that way you will able to predict that how much uh, devices you need or how much addition of devices or line cards you need in in future right so if you look at it the past and then you can actually finding out the trend analysis and you will come to know how much capacity planning i i should do right so inventory give all those details to us easy to check and assign the free ports on the for the server team you can actually configure those ports on the software you don't need to do anything on switch and router you can assign to particular team and you can then figure out that how many ports are assigned to so and so team and then if they if you want to do the cross charge you can do the cross charge with them that i given up 100 ports to you um, and that is for last 3 months so per port my charge is this much so you can do all that so all that is actually part of a inventory the second thing we look at it in detail is fault and syslog and look at it the um you can say uh, outcome perspective uh, all that syslogs and faults we actually bring together from different devices and there is no limitation of what kind of device you can have xc device you can have xr device you can have an nxos device you can have aci device so any device from cisco or third party guys we are actually bring those logs and syslogs to syslogs and and fault together and then we run a correlation uh cycle or correlation algorithm on top of that and by that way we are able to figure out uh what is the root cause of particular issue or pointed towards the root cause and then it is actually reducing the mean time to uh, resolve the issue or repair the issue right so that's what we are trying to do here the performance and fault kpi is also giving the same thing key performance indicator perspective what is the uptime of the network what is the uptime of the device what is the uptime of that particular port that particular line card that particular power supply and based on that you can see how that particular site is performing if the particular site is having more failures then you will actually able to figure out that if particular device or particular part code is having more failures you will able to devise that and slowly we actually start to do some kind of a detection anomalies and proactively there is a module called as a proactive closed loop monitoring and we will see that in details that actually goes and define some criteria and fetch the details and every day and tells you that 
I see some type of symptoms that you may have a problem after two days, something like that, right? Then there is a network topology, which you can see here. There is a huge, uh, uh, a very detailed topology model. And basically, topology model is design and design philosophy behind the topology model is once you log into the topology model, you don't need to log into the any other device or any other router, right? Router or switch. Every data which you need, that should be available on topology model. We will go detail and see that there. And then there is a closed loop monitoring perspective. Um, you can see the problem, do the continuous monitoring, define the signatures, identify and detect the signatures are, are matching, and then you do the remediation. Completely automated job. We will see in detail uh, after some time, right? So that's what. There are some other, those are efficiency improvement, automated ticketing system. You The tickets are getting automatically logged. Tickets are getting getting automatically resolved. You don't need to do log neither log a ticket. You don't need to either resolve the ticket. If problem disappears because of closed loop monitoring system or repair, automatically ticket gets resolved. If if system sees the problem on a network, automatically ticket gets logged. Right? Flexible data perspective. You can do a lot of analytics on data and and create your business business intelligence perspective, business analytics perspective data from that. And then uh, the last one which we saw a lot of guys are saying. Change management should be completely auto automated, right? And and this reduces the complete human effort. One click deployment of the configurations, all different types of devices, XE, XR, NXY, XR, any any different types of devices. So that's what we are actually uh, showing some benefits here, right? So that's what we are saying. So um, from you guys' operational perspective, which particular problem you think? is more more suitable or more important for you which you want to solve which problem you think is is more more problematic for you and so you want to solve that which is more issue for us you can go to uh, that same menti.com put the 10 48 72 and you can actually yeah you can do the bars and say which one is more important for you <clears throat> workforce is not a problem for the first uh, uh, participant which we added that that not much problem for him OS upgrade is middle level problem. The inventory is probably most popular one. Even correlation, noise versus music is is not is, is not a big problem for you guys. That uh, the workforce is also manpower is also not issue. That's what I'm getting from this. The real issue is inventory and config change management. Config change management is right now in a topmost thing. Inventory is the second second one. The compliance and security inventory. These are the these are the top three. So config change management, compliance and security, and inventory of network. These are the top three. Everybody actually able to see that what others also thinking. And this is a collective uh, opinion which is coming. And I'm very happy to see that, that what all we are thinking together and that ultimately we are actually reaching to the says that, OK, change management and and manual is the biggest problem compliance and security is the second one third one is inventory having net at one place right so these are the top three things because meanwhile sandeep sonal you want to share your experience about these points what you see in in the networks so uh uh, so on this side, so I agree with the configuration change management and manual errors. So this point is definitely uh, 
the very strong point wherein uh, the automation plays a key role and i think uh, we can you know by this uh, automation session help in understanding how we mitigate the configuration change uh, which is stitched across the entire network because every node anyway uh, the configuration on any node uh, is never on in an isolation it is a stitched network uh, whether it is big or a small network so yes that helps rushi sandeep meanwhile yeah till you these guys are feeling <clears throat> Indeed, Krishna ji, uh, and uh, you know this is clear evident that uh, the, the way what we are thinking while solving the problem, uh, we see the similar pattern across the industry. Uh, whichever you know uh, market segment you go, these are the common uh, trends seen across the customers. So let us let us move to the to the actual uh, the solution perspective. If you look at it, this. This is what we took, put together for some of the largest SPs, probably world's biggest uh, SP networks, and some of the enterprise networks. Um, probably you can see India's biggest bank, uh, pri biggest private bank. And there are some other data center networks. So we are using these, right? And 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 based on a, uh, what is the need of that particular organization. Some of the module actually goes there. Some of those doesn't go. Uh, if you look at it from inventory and and that side perspective, the, the the yellow portion which is there, that normally goes on every every account, right, or every network. Uh, the the green portion where SCM and NSO is there, that portion is basically depending on how big network they have. And how the con service service network so that that NSO is a network service orchestrator. So based on network service orchestration, how, what kind of service configurations which you are doing and the services those are getting offered in the market and all NSO actually plays a very big and significant role in that portion. You can see the way XTC those are basically a service provider side product to do. Uh, XTC does the SR uh, related uh, segment routing related uh, deployment and configuration, and it's a SR controller basically SRPC. The way it gives you a very detailed uh, planning uh, related data and how your network is performing and, and the planning data, capacity planning, failure analysis, e fields analysis, what if analysis, and so uh, we can actually do using base. So that is that. And SD WAN controller uh, based on uh, if you have SD WAN, so that is getting integrated with this. But the yellow portion, which you see at, at the right side, that yellow portion is basically on. Normally getting demanded by all customers, and we will go one by one in these models. Now, if you look at it, there is a right side portion and there is a left side portion. Left side portion is basically uh, help you to do the plan, build means deploy your network, and migrate your network from X type of devices to Y type of devices, or old devices to new devices, or X vendor to Y vendor, right? So that's what the capability at left side. So if you look at the entire cycle, then if you want to cover in uh, plan, design, implement, uh, operate, and optimize, the plan, design, and implement portion happens in a, uh, the left side of a portion. And then operate and optimize, um, that portion happens in the right side of a thing, right? So that's what the you can say uh, one, one type of bifurcation here. So the plan, build, migrate portion actually shows you how you can build your network. We build the world's largest network using these modules. And uh, we build it in a record time, right? So that's what the capability of tools. So if you want to roll out 5,000 sites, 10,000 sites, if you want to deploy the uh, hundreds of switches, thousands of switches in your data center or or in a, your campus, these are the models which actually help you to do that completely automated way. The automation has some benefits, but automation has small drawback also. It takes some startup time to actually put everything together and when first outcome comes uh, uh, to the to the actual production that takes some time but once it first product first uh, object comes in a production or first switch which we roll out first router which will roll out then your speed doesn't have any limit right so we we are actually trying to solve that problem also by putting this is predefined models together you are your startup time or first device to roll out time 
by t0 to you can say first device roll out time is getting reduced by this way right so these are these uh, modules that those, those are actually doing a plan build and migrate for you right in migration this is also very good if you are migrating from old switches to new switches and there is a changes in configuration if you are changing a vendor the migrate device, migrate portion actually plays very significant it actually sit in your premise it understand your configuration converts into the new configurations and help you to deploy the new switches sometimes you can say uh, without downtime you can do the parallel setup you can do rip and replace remove old device put new device all that you can do so that's what we do on a plan build today's focus is not much about plan build and migrate but more focus on right side of a thing which is um, uh, operate and optimize so we will actually look at it, uh, the all those uh, uh, one by one modules these are the microservices based model this is completely next generation you can say cloud native kind of architecture but if there is no need to be go on a cloud you can actually put this all together using you know, kubernetes um, uh, container thing in your own premises if you are not comfortable with container then you can go with the start traditional vm world you can put it on open stack so whatever you are you are thinking uh, either kubernetes open stack or by traditional vmware way whatever way you want to put you can keep this in your premises this is completely horizontally scalable and uh, you can actually start from say 500 devices 1000 devices and you can go up to 3 lakh 4 lakh devices right now in some cases this is serving for 3 lakh devices right so that's what that's what we are doing we will go to the next slide and see some of those one by one so basically if you look at it that um, what all activities we are actually covering from this we are covering the software release management you can upgrade your all types of devices switches routers firewalls access points all that you can do uh, we can do the change management the the mopa box which you can see at a left side the first box from from left side is method of procedure automation which actually helps you to do uh, change management or change configuration on all kinds of devices and this is very innovatively uh, designed to verify that every configuration which you put on a devices that configuration should get verified uh, before putting we should say that there is a necessity requirements are there fulfilled there to put this configuration and once we push the configuration we verify that that configuration is actually we are able to see the necessary changes in a control plane and forwarding plane right so that's what so what we created we created small configuration nuggets say link configuration say isis configuration say bgp configuration a vrrp configuration and we put up a standard pre checks and post check that once if we want to do vrrp configuration on particular device what all things we should check first if those pre checks passed then then i should push the configuration configuration is ready with you you just need to give a variable parameters you don't need to do any changes in a configuration this is verified cisco certified verified configuration on particular device and then you do the post check and say that my vrp is working fine right so this is one nugget or you can say this is one portion you can keep these kind of a 5 10 20 100 nuggets in a one method of procedure then one by one system will execute that and push the configuration. that is not on one device you can say my business is asking me to create a one kind of a reachability from uh, access devices to data center and there are probably 10 devices you need to configure in between you need to configure some access devices you need to configure some wi-fi devices you need to configure some core switches and pass that vlan and do the necessary changes then you take that take that flow to the data center then you need to configure data center switches you need to configure for vlans for servers you need to configure a load balancer you need to configure a um, firewall you can put all that together in one bop and it will actually go one by one and keep configuring one by one devices and make sure that your entire workflow is through and through uh, enabled and your reachability is there from end to end right so that's what the capability and because it has the capability to talk to all devices like i said xc devices xr devices uh, 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 based on a cli nx os devices eci devices whatever device you have or even some of the third party devices you can actually create this nugget and use those nuggets 
another important thing which we have created is even though there is a lot of programming capability those are available in method of procedure application but you don't need to do any programming by just doing a from user interface you can create your different different workflows and say that if my bgp doesn't come up then you do this then you troubleshoot this particular way if my link doesn't come up then you do do this if the root is not reachable then you flap the bgp you do this way all that you can actually put together in a programmable way of workflow and by that way you will able to, and this is this is you can design yourself you don't need to have any programming knowledge for that so that's what the uh, method of procedure thing is actually doing right so that's what i was trying to explain and we will go in detail uh, and i will show some snapshot to you and all basically then we do the very detailed net fault management for correlation finding out root flaws then we do the performance management threshold based performance management find out what kind of so performance management are getting done by a lot of guys but what kind of a parameter we check that is far more than what normal nms and ems devices do right and then we do inventory and topology and we'll go detail about that so basically if you see our fundamental idea is that all this come together is to reduce the downtime or not to have any downtime and re with reduce the manpower so how you can actually reduce uh, the mttr basically idea is there is a there is a some time goes for mean time to identify the problem once you see there is a problem then you need to find it out and understand where is the actually problem is and then you take some time to fix and verify right we trying to resolve this first two section uh, the, the time should get re reduced and the second two section should happen completely automated way right so that's what the real idea right so from a change management perspective how much is how much is uh, the downtime in happens in your organization from because of manual errors the gartner says there is a certain number which i will tell you once i see the number but gartner says or, or there are a lot of survey happens those says there is x number of downtimes happens because of pure manual errors and if you automate the, your change management those all will go away i have that number but once i see how you guys are responding i will actually tell that number to you anyway sandeep you want to add rushikesh you want to add till guys are actually doing polling on the numbers you can keep adding your uh some experiences based on the downtime and how we resolve that using automation in some accounts <clears throat> rushikesh <Okay>, sandeep <coughs> sonal <laughs>
go ahead krishna ji yeah good so so the, i saw some of the complaints on uh, about why is that's what i was actually so so good guys actually if you look at this there are minimum uh, 50% or more than that participants are saying there are 20% 25% of their uh, downtime is because of configuration there are some other guys are saying uh, those are around 25 to uh, 40% of time is because of manner there are some guys are saying more than 40% time is actually so gardner says 60% of time is or or the surveys a lot of says that more than 60% of time is because of manual errors we made we we network engineers do some mistakes uh, uh, because of whatever reason and because of that network breaks right so that's what the number which is coming uh, it is good that we have a lower number in our environment and and uh, but some other countries are actually showing that kind of numbers right so basically what we are trying to say is all this 40% 50% which we saw that should go away completely and then we will have a nearly manual error perspective nearly zero zero downtime right so that's what the agenda or you can say design criteria to design the method of procedure automation so if you look at it there are there are three things people processes uh, technology right so all these three together work together and actually give you give us a output right so people who, who is responsible for for what a person, particular person is authorized to do change on particular device there should not be other person should go and do the changes on that device the, the person should be knowledgeable he should know the history then we, then then only he will be able to do the appropriate changes on the right right segregation of control there is a somebody who will make it that somebody will check that right so so multiple verification should happen before mop going into the production so that control right understanding of business process if i today do this particular changes in this device what all impact will happen process perspective the change control mechanism that who should approve who should give a give a understanding of impact analysis uh the, the change that changes will how business will impact and because of that and all that right and then technology is different types of um, commands and different routers some routers uh, take that particular command for configuration xyz thing or xyz feature in a particular way uh, and nxos do in particular way aci does particular way xros does particular way different vendors are do in particular way ultimately if we want to achieve some configuration their way of doing configuration that should be get completely you can say abstracted from the user from a technology perspective the user should only fill uh, their uh, inputs about which variable parameters and all and all below portion that what command how to configure and all should get abstracted by by the way the nso does that abstraction very well mopa does uh, the process automation very well so together mopa and nso will actually show you the results of abstraction you don't need to have a knowledge how to how to configure a so and so feature in my network right so that's what yeah, that's you don't need so if you look at it <clears throat> these all together that gives us a change management to us and basically by this change management we achieve you can say some kind of a process flow and i was trying to explain some time back this is the that raid thing that method of auto, uh, method of procedure automation thing what we create is we create a mop automated way where you go on a software and tell that i want to configure a link i want to configure on that link igp protocol on that igp protocol once igp is coming up i want to do the bgp between two routers and then once i see the bgp i should see so and so route so i want to advertise these routes or something like that and once i see, see that bgp routes are getting out i should see the traffic on a forwarding plane and if i see the traffic on for link my so and so site should be reachable right so if that is the objective you can create a mop and automated way into the method of procedure uh, uh, module and once you create that you can see the below nuggets in a snapshot below those are nuggets there you can configure that nugget as i explain there is a nugget for addition of link there is a nugget for doing changes on igp or addition of igp there is a doing changes on a bgp then verification of the traffic and all those nuggets you can call completely programmatically using ui no programming language uh, uh, knowledge required right 
and by that way by just doing some few few clicks you will able to mop put together method of procedure put together which will in turn will go to the uh, verification uh, uh, to the somebody with reviewer and reviewer will approve on approve on the system once review will approve the change window will get scheduled and system will automatically deploy entire configuration within a change window you don't even need to the present also at that time right if you want to present you you will still only keep look at it, the screen you don't need to do anything system will go one by one pick up one nugget do the pre-checks if the pre-checks are passed as per your logic then it will go push the configuration once configuration is there it will do the post check verify your configuration is perfectly there not only it will verify from uh, assurance perspective or show config perspective it is there but it will look at the impact of that is there is there in a control plane we are able to see those routes are there or that interface is coming up on a forwarding plane perspective we can see the traffic on that particular link or something like that at all uh, those are possible here so that's what the mopa does at very high level i think we discuss enough so mopa uh, benefits rishikesh you want to cover uh, the mopa benefits meanwhile rishikesh definitely uh, krishna ji yeah. sure sure right. So uh, from business uh, business benefit perspective, right? I mean, how uh, the CTOs here or uh, the execs should look at the module and the benefits, what they'll get it, right? Uh, there are tangible, measurable benefits. There are non-tangible uh, benefits, which you cannot measure, but you can experience the difference, right? So uh, to start with touch point reduction, it's a single pin of glass where any OS platform level of config creation itself gets automated, number one. You don't have to run around, you know, or having different, different expertise of resources preparing the configuration for each type. In the same platform, you'll get uh, the planned event scheduling, approvals, reporting, the complete workflow in terms of how change management should be uh, defined from the requester till uh, it is implemented. From manners reduction perspective, again, there are predefined usable uh, config templates which are there based on you know the past experience uh, we have with all the customers and it, it's more of an engineer uh, empowered wherein uh, there is less of dependency on coding uh, or you know developing or customizing anything it's like whatever nuggets you have you just reuse it restructure it create your own mock template and keep using it for day-to-day uh, -day change management Other than manual reduction, uh, doing it uh, right for the first time. So once you have deterministic mop or the method of process once defined, then you can reuse those so that you know there is less of uh, human intervention. System knows what are the inputs, what will be the output, so more predictable. And uh, again, once you implement this, there will be always forensic for the forensic investigation. You will have historical data, which typically we miss, you know, what happened uh, five months back or six months back when the change request was done. Did the engineer really execute the command or not? Where are those logs? Are those in the, uh, you know, laptop or personal folder of uh, the engineer, right? So all these are uh, we are trying to address here. Other than this, even uh, time it takes for overall uh, change request to execute right from the uh, requesting the change request to the implementation, right? Uh, with the automated pre-check, post-check, rollback facility, and real-time log and uh, understanding the impact, it reduces the overall time it takes to execute DCR. So these are the silent features. Uh, some of them definitely measurable in terms of uh, how it reduces the time. Some of them are non-measurable, but definitely tangible experience, you can get it. Krishna ji, over to you. Yes, we'll, we'll move to the next one. Uh, basically, uh, compliance and remediation, right? So a lot of guys are saying compliance and remediation, and, and we just saw some time back our number two priority was the compliance and remediation. So guys, just put that how much time you spend out of your total time Wow, so somebody is saying 50 more than a 50% time on compliance, right? So that's what the <clears throat> thing. So good, good guys. So keep adding and, and the next model which you are showing is all about. And while you guys are doing this, I will keep explaining what the, the question in front of some 
Some of the SPs are asking us that we have a two lakh devices in network. I have a more than 10,000 switches in my, my data center. Uh, you guys are coming and telling me that if you have a, this kind of configuration is not correct, then I have a vulnerability. Then I have a chance of downtime. Then I have a non-compliance. Tell me how I can make sure my two lakh devices or 10,000 devices or 20,000 devices, I have one lakh access points. How I can make sure those all access points in a compliance mode and that should be with very less manpower don't ask me to add manpower as i have a 10000 devices or 5000 devices today i have a 10000 devices tomorrow i will have a 20000 devices my manpower will remain same and probably you guys are experienced that we keep adding the network devices but nobody um, use a very happy face to add more manpower into that right <clears throat> So 25%, 10 to 25% guys are nine, 20 to 40% are five guys, uh, team members and 40 to 55% are three, right? So that's what the situation. Uh, importantly, no, no, ah, somebody is even spending more than 50, 55% time of operation time in his, uh, his compliance, compliance portion and remediation portion. So we'll stop quickly. Uh, so guys, if you wanted to put, I'm just, a, just a started a timer. We can quickly close the voting. Anybody else there to vote? You guys are able to see the timer? Yes, Krishna. Good. Yeah. I think we have everybody's thing. We will go to the next one. Most of the guys are saying, if I take average around 25% to 35%, everybody is saying minimum 25 to 35% time is actually going into the. If you see that the second second module, which is ICM module, right? If you see that, what is the capability of that module? You can create your own rules or Cisco already created more than 3000 rules for you to check your configuration is correct on that particular device or not. And this is on per device basis. The kind of devices which you have, how to configure line VTY, how to configure your ISIS, how to configure your VGP, how to configure particular interface. If you have gig zero interface or gig interface, how to do that. If you have 10 gig interface, how to do that. If you have 40 gig interface, how to do that. So all that is actually, we, we have put these uh, templates, you can say there. And there is a mechanism that you can pass the values to those template. And it can then go and find it out per device basis. The configuration is perfectly as per your plan or not. Normally the all industry tool and probably you also know some of the tools. Those are those are only verifying uh, the parameter. Those are non variable. They are just checking those 10 lines are there or not. But if we wanted to, from a planning perspective, we wanted to give IP address, which is 10.10.10, .10 but somebody in, made a mistake and given IP as a 10.10.10 .10 and last 10 instead of that, he forgot the zero and put 10.10.1. There is no tool which actually catches that. This is the tool which has a capability to even match those variable parameters and create a configuration on a poor device basis and match each and everything, variable parameters also and the configuration on the devices also. So your compliance is getting complied from a two perspective. One, your all values are correct and there is no duplication of IP. There is no wrong IP. There is no wrong MTU. There is no two neighbors configured. Um, uh, there should not be less than two neighbors for redundancy perspective for ISIS, BGP, then that verification you can do. So your design related rules also getting verified in some cases, right? So that's what the capability so what you can do, you can actually create the rules which you can see on the top. You can go to those parameters from configuration inventory or the, the planning database. Those gets added into the rule. You can create a job and you can run those job every day. You can say these are the five rules run my every day, run four hours and it will keep checking that anybody on the device is becoming non-compliance because of this. Somebody changed the configuration and device, it goes and verify that who changed what and is it becoming a non-compliance of that device particular. And if you allow 
to system and saying that if this particular rule, if somebody has become a non-compliance and somebody changes the configuration, please automated way say, please go and do the remediation there, right? So, so it actually does the automated remediation also. You can create a different kind of audits. You can say that I have a HIP audit. I, you can say PCI audit. You can say my security team said, this is a 2019 audit. These are the 10 rules which I need to check every day and I, every day audit will keep running. So there is no chance that you will have a device which is hidden in a network which doesn't have a compliance, right? So that's what the uh, I see. Did we lose Krishna ji on the call? Hi, Sujit. We can't hear anything. I mean, Krishna ji is not here. Uh, please drop a message saying that uh, there's some network issues with Krishna ji. So I think he will come back in a second. Enable my button to present it again. Okay. So I don't know why this, but so I think we were trying. The swim is trying to find it out. 
when to upgrade and then prepare a plan for you and tell you that oh, this is the impact and this is the right window to upgrade that capability also there so that's what we are discussing the concurrency portion we discuss that you can do upgrades in various regions and all and it actually find out the dependency and all so that's what the basically capability of swim Hey, Krishna, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, when we lost to that time, we were on ICM model. Uh, next, next module seems to be the swim. Why oh, is that? Is the swim guys, you were not able to, you are not, not heard no, about swim. No, I think swim? we lost you. We lost you prior uh, swim. I think we lost you prior swim. Okay, I will, we'll go back again. So swim perspective, if you look at it, this, the swim is basically a OS upgrade thing and, and um, it actually has a lot of capabilities. You can actually suggest to swim that you please, this is my recommended iOS for this particular hardware. And in that situation, uh, uh, swim actually scans your all devices, looks at that, it actually talks to the inventory also and see that okay which all devices are in compliance which are devices running that recommended os and then if you see out of 100 devices suppose 50 devices are running on recommended os and other 50 are not running then it actually can create a plan for remaining 50 devices uh, saying that okay these are the 50 devices which you want to upgrade then you can define user can define i want to upgrade these 50 devices in 30 days and then looking at a uh, looking at a performance performance uh, data, the system can tell you that if you upgrade a so-and-so device at so-and-so time, on so-and-so date, on 25th of every month, midnight, 3 o'clock, if you upgrade this device, this device will actually give a minimal impact to you. The next minimal impact window is probably uh, 12 o'clock midnight. Something like that. So it, it can give a windows to you based on the utilization, the lesser affected uh, uh, users and, and services. And based on that, you can pick and choose that how much how much tolerance I have for my customers and my services. You can pick and choose window or you can give automated way to, to the swim to do that, right? So that's not, uh, so, so by that way, your plan is completely ready to become a compliant on all your devices and upgrade OS. And then it actually does the OS upgrade basis on what pre-check I should do. And we try to work with each business unit of Cisco and, and try to find it out that what all the chances uh, of, of this device will not come up again if I don't check these things, right? So we define the pre-checks and a basis of that. If all those pre-checks are passed, then I am nearly 99.95% sure that this device will come up after reboot. Still, there are, you can say, 0.5% probabilities up there that once we reboot, device may uh, turn up or come up properly. But we make sure that we do that hardware pre-checks properly to see the device is healthy. And if we reboot, all my line cards, all my device, all my spare parts should come up properly and we will not have issue. Or if we have a issue right now, detect that first, get replaced those, this, this, those parts, and then you upgrade. Similarly, the capability which we have is to do the pre-checks and says what all services are running, how many customers are connected, how much traffic is going on particular interfaces, and post-upgrade also, we should have a matching results that if I have 20 interfaces up and running before upgrade, after upgrade also, we should have a 20 interfaces up and running. If there is a particular interface is throwing a traffic of, say, 100 Mbps, then after upgrade also, I should see 100 Mbps, 20 Mbps, something like that, right? So their matching result should be there. So all those pre-checks and post-checks we, we do, and those are predefined, completely pre predefined thing. You can define your own also, but there are Cisco perspective, we define our own intelligence perspective, what all those are required. You can keep additionally doing and pre-checks and post-check on top of that, right? So that's what we do. Anything which you want to add, Sandeep, Sonal, Rush, uh, 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 Rushikesh on, on the swim perspective? Uh, Krishna ji, I think you have covered uh, something more to add something. 
I think this this is what we were actually looking at at that time, right? So what is the what kind of issues we face? Uh, Sandeep, you, meanwhile, you can keep keep adding if you wanted to add. <clears throat> yeah, so I think uh, we, have, we have observed this in multiple places. It's uh, one of the painful uh, activities that goes on if it's done manually. And uh, there are alternates which were used as a standby scripts, but it doesn't actually help. So this swim combines the technical activity uh, making sure pre before the upgrade after the upgrade everything is normal giving a very very quick crisp view for the user to see what has changed and execution is as simple as just clicking a button and experiencing observing for the end result the entire process can be scheduled to be triggered automated way so that user can define okay uh, in the night time 2 a.m just start the activity complete and report to me we have seen the topology awareness being used in the upgrade activity is a great help so affinity anti-affinity a one device taken for upgrade should then the other one should not be taken because my services are redundant so service level redundancy device level redundancy multiple factors in fact there are places where uh, just like any any protocol, uh, a group zero, group one, area one, area zero, there are administrative controls where particular geography, there is a person who is responsible for uptime. Only his approval is provided, once it is provided, the upgrade or the device can be delivered. Such approval cycles embedded in the process, it actually helps a lot for anybody to do upgrade and upgrade becomes a, a cakewalk kind of thing. That's where I'll end it here. Are we able to hear Krishna ji? Krishna ji, we can't hear you though. Yeah, you guys are able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah, you're back now. You're back. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Yeah. So, so the, basically, I was talking about the inventory module. 
the inventory module which we are talking about that the lot of details which we uh, which we collect from router and i was explaining the how we collect the data from and i was explaining that we collect the each and every data point which is available on router or switch or or the so and so thing for example i was giving that if certain router is supports only say 255 or 256 vrr fixation so when we collect the data from router and if we already collected 100 vrr fixations next time when you try to create from the mopa next vrr fixation you will get some kind of a message saying that now you are actually covered 50% of total capacity you already cover for example right so so each component which you are trying to configure each important component which you are trying to configure we are keeping track of that and saying that how much capacity is getting really utilized and how much more you have available to do the asset switching perspective available with you so that's what the inventory perspective which we are collect and i initially when i was yeah 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 initially when i was uh, i was talking about inventory i was actually explaining that the the inventory you can assign labels you can assign a site addresses lot longs you can assign a cisco pricing to that or you can create your own pricing and put the money into that after depreciation you will come to know my this site is worth of 5 crore rupees this site is worth of 2 crore rupees or 5 lakh rupees or whatever that, like that and you can actually match the serial numbers with site so by that way you will have a consolidated inventory available which will come to know how many of devices you are going end of life and your end of support and all that right so that's what was actually uh, you can do all that with inventory we are spending additional now time on this is a topology view when i when i was explaining the topology view um, you can see on the top there is a topology view shown here there are different types of routers and you have a Uh, the links configured there you can see the different links utilization of different links there are a lot of different colors of router use basis on their health health situation if there is a some major uh, events happen on a at, uh, on that particular router there are, then you can see the different colors on the same uh, topology you can see the how much is the link utilization what kind of errors you are getting on a link uh, Uh, you can actually right click a router and you will actually open this kind of a menu which you can see that the black circle menu and that black circle menu will actually able to take reach to the inventory of that router the configuration of that router the last uh, you can say 5 minutes 10 minutes half an hour uh, performance utilization of that router cpu memory cpu memory utilization of that router interface utilization of router same you are clicking here it will take you to the anybody done last 10 changes 20 changes on this router it will able to take you the syslogs of routers so just logging into this module and clicking here and there because all is connected to each other you will able to completely troubleshoot the another beauty which is what topology model you want to you can select the two routers of these and ask that okay show me the path between these two routers and even though you have a four five different path system will tell you which is the path where the traffic is flowing which is the best path right now which is igp selected we should only troubleshoot that path because all other path even though those are there those are traffic is not going there if there is icmp then system will show that both the path to you as active path right so you can actually figure out the active paths from this system also so she sandeep want to add something here If not, I will go ahead. I think typically for a NOC user, when they get uh, uh, any kind of alert or anybody wants to see the, how the network is connected, uh, for a smaller network is easy or a very very well designed, completely adhering to the uh, critical criticality of the rules defined of planning. It probably could be easy, but it's not reality normally. And one has to go back to topology to see how it's connected uh, in terms of who are the neighbors and all that. But when you are in topology, the, there are a lot of other factors that one would like to know okay what's the config on the device what's the last trap or few what are the current traps on device what are the syslogs on this device if there is an issue so maybe the visit to topology is for a troubleshooting purpose 
uh, when it's that, uh, you don't want to go to another system to look at the syslog of device. You don't want to have a trap to see another system to see, okay, what are the traps on device? You don't want, so for example, if there is an issue of packets not reaching destination, and that's I'm talking technical language, the user could say my application is not working. If one wants to say, okay, this is my starting point, this is my end point. I want to know what's the, as Krishnaji mentioned, what's my active path currently? So one visible uh, action tells me, okay, these are the devices coming into the part of the network. Uh, topology, because inventory has all the hard and soft uh, inventory, topology has ability to show uh, the dependency, interdependency, and hence the other modules like SWIM is uh, capable of using the topology awareness and services awareness. So there is a linked benefit that one can see. Thank you, Sanjay. Thanks. So we quickly go, we should keep the half an hour for Q&A sessions. I will quickly move to the, the next portion of um, performance. So you can see the performance parameter, which you can see the CPU utilization, memory utilization, interface utilization, temperature, quality of service parameters. You can see there is a, there is a block below also, which actually shows, um, one second, I will move that bar. There is some bar here. Okay, so there is a, you guys are able to see? Yes, we can. But not in presentation mode, right? Yeah, so, so basically you can see the interface errors and then the, you can see the graph there, which is, which is actually showing uh, the, the inter, how the interface is actually flowing with traffic and what is the historical data for that? And all that is actually visible in this particular thing. The important thing and performance thing, what we are doing is we, we are making sure, and you can see the now the entire graph is clearly visible you now below. You can actually hover your mouse there and see that, okay, tell me what was the utilization at that time. The graph is below, right? So basically what important thing we are doing is we are doing some kind of anomaly detection here and saying that I know the trend of this particular device of this particular parameter from last six months every tuesday 12 o'clock this device has this much is utilization now i see the change there today and that change is more than 10 percent and so that gives you some kind of a ticket or insight to you which will actually tell you that something is happening different today than last six months or last three months and why my interface utilization is going down or more than uh, the normal behavior of that interface, right? So that's what which we can see here. So this is basically on a performance parameter. You can see on a top board dashboard is showing a lot of uh, blue things, and but there are in you know, one uh, snapshot you saw there are only three or four devices, or some percentage of devices are non-compliant. So we set the threshold of each of these parameters, and as soon as that device crosses that threshold, and this is a Cisco recommended threshold for that particular device. And as soon as we see there is a problem in that device, which is crossing that threshold, actually that comes in a screen. If you just put this into your, this dashboard into your um, knock, you will see any device is crossing the threshold or not, right? So that's what it is showing to you. Uh, I will move to the next one quickly. This is all about, uh, you can say, uh, uh, how you can add, fault uh, details and, and inventory together, right? So what we do, we do a lot of processing on faults and syslog. We bring those faults and syslog to the data lake. Uh, we have a complete uh, database of the configurations which we do the changes on top. Those configurations uh, getting actually, you can say correlated with that, that it, as soon as you change the configuration, is there any uh, faults and syslogs created because of that? or there is an inventory database available with us. If you do the changes in inventory and change some line card from one line card to another line card, is that because of that any logs or, or faults are created by that? So that inventory perspective, then there is a configuration perspective, both that perspective is actually bringing together. And, and then we see, is there any topology change because of, uh, because of uh, some, some link flap, then topology change happen, and then there is alarm created. So all that gets verified, and based on that verification, actually, there is a ticketing engine which we created where automatic ticket get, gets logged in. We can go as detailed as I can speak about one hour, two hours, the how detailing we are doing and how we do the ticket logging 
and do the correlation of engine. But I, I just wanted to quickly do there are some noise reduction thing. We do a lot of noise reduction and reduce your unwanted, uh, unproblematic symptoms. And we actually focus on the specific root cause that where is exactly the problem, right? So that's what we are actually saying to this. So basically, system gets all all faults, syslogs, do the correlation with topology, fault, uh, inventory, performance, the changes in a configuration. And by that way, we come up with the recommended thing that we think that this particular problem happened because of these changes on a network, or there is a associated log to that, there is a syslog to that, and then ticket shows that where exactly the problem is. And, and and try to pinpoint on the problem. Probably next uh, next slide is actually showing that that how we actually do our ticketing engine and and send it to the send it to the other ticketing systems if you have in your organization. So you don't need to log any ticket if your network has a problem. Ticket will get logged automatically. If if the network tries to resolve problem in self healing auto remediating system and if the it actually gets remediated automatically. Uh, the the ticket gets closed, right? So that's what we are actually trying to show here. The the another thing which I was explaining is that the topology based fault fault correlation, which we do be lot of algorithms. One of the algorithm is topology based fault correlation. And if you see that there, there is a pinpointed router which is actually uh, got isolated, and because of that, below ten routers, twenty routers are actually getting isolated. So if you see there is a specific router highlighted by system and saying that if these two brown links, if you correct, your entire fault will get resolved, right? So that's what it is actually pinpointing. Either this router or these two brown links. You have to correct these, your entire fault system will get, and, and because of that, your remaining 30 devices or remaining 100 users will get automatically up and running, right? So that's what the correlation it is showing here. This is the topology consolidated uh, topology thing which we are actually showing. So coming together and and back, you can see there is another one is PCLM which we have not in got detail. There is a detailed reporting thing which we have not in gone in detail. There is AFMA which is actually ACI. If you have ACI setup, then we have ACI fault management module because ACI is faults works in a particular way and lot of machine learning we use there. So that is there. I just want to spend two minutes on PCLM and then we'll start for Q&A. So basically, the PCLM here is doing a, pro a proactive closed loop monitoring. So what we do, we actually go on a devices, pull devices, get their syslogs, go to the some commands and try to find it out some signatures. Those we know from last 20 years that if there is a problem and if we found some kind of sy symptoms after 10 days, after two days, after certain hours, we will have a problem in a network. And those the signatures we bring back, try to find it out there is a problem and log a ticket. Even we can send a log a ticket to the Cisco TAC and then Cisco TAC does some kind of analysis on that. Some analysis are inbuilt available and, and remediation is available and then Mopa gets bigger and Mopa does the remediation on top of that. But in some cases, we don't know the sim we don't know the resolution, but we know the symptoms. Then in that case, you can send it to the TAC also, right? So some of those are there. The one portion I wanted to show is another one is SCCM NSO portion. The NSO that is network service orchestrator. If you have a lot of services which you offer to your customers and if you do, and if you want to do the self-service kind of thing where your customer can come your portal and say, I want this service or within IT department, you are offering some services to your within organization clients and you want to create a catalog. And from the catalog perspective, you want to push some services. The NSO is actually Orchestration perspective, it can do deploy the, these services very efficiently. It has abstraction layer, which is very powerful. We can abstract firewall, network devices, switches, routers, third party devices, lot of those. And, and if you have that kind of network, then NSO SCCM is, is a good configuration, service configuration tool for you. Right? So that is the another portion I wanted to highlight. The last one, and, and Rushi, Sandeep, you guys can talk, or talk about this. Basically, we are seeing what is the risk and what kind of a mitigation plan we have to do, right? The downtime gives a brand at stake. Uptime assurance is a problem. There are security perspective, cyber attack risk, data security problems. Outsourcing of human resources and omission of employees, errors, organization changes, skill availability, human dependency. 
these are the different risk and then what kind of a uh, you can say mitigation plan we are putting together that is actually this slide issue uh, sandeep rushikesh you want to speak about 2 minutes 5 minutes on this slide then you can take all questions I'm not sure whether there is background noise or it. So just to spend like a couple of minutes on this, uh, the common risk across any type of customers uh, is, is captured on the left hand side. While how we have been mitigating all this, uh, especially on the support part, you know, we have uh, the SLA based smart net contracts plus. Uh, some of the 24 by 7 tax support and BCA services, right? That's how we have been covering the proactive and uh, reactive uh, support model. Plus, uh, any software related uh, issues we have been addressing, Cisco has been addressing by providing the bug fixes or hot patches, right? On top of it, the <clears throat> operational issues which are contributing to the risk, we are trying to address, address it by increasing the excellence, operational excellence. And these uh, risk, if, if you look at on the right hand side, in the uh, network automation and analytic platform, how we have been addressing. So these modules, what Krishnaji just mentioned, the KPI performance module, PCLM, fault topology, they all contribute towards increase operational excellence. So that's how uh, we have been looking at, you know, how the mitigation plan can be for the common risk. Krishnaji. Basically, that's what we wanted to show, and we can take the, 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 so the ultimately final slide, which we wanted to show is uh, we can actually talk about some build and migrate cases, and I will quick, quickly go through those, and those basically we wanted to say that <clears throat> what kind of a migrate and plan which we discuss on on top about what kind of migrations you guys are involved in, how your difficulties in migration are, we can discuss. In open forum and, uh, and uh, questions and answers. Guys, go ahead with your questions. Happy to answer. Everybody, uh, Sonal, myself, Sandeep, Rushikesh will take questions. Uh, Sujit, uh, even Vikas, we will all all will take your questions. Happy to answer questions. Please go ahead. You can open your uh, un un unmute yourself uh, and update the questions. We will try to answer. So, uh, Krishna, just so we have Q and a window. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going there. If, if we can get the questions over there, probably, you know, we'll unmute uh, individual uh, in case uh, if there is need to, you know, unmute. Yeah, guys, questions. I can. I am monitoring the window. Uh, so there is one question. How is this tool licensed? Uh, is it based on devices or interfaces or both? Yeah, you want to take that question first, Krishnaji? Basically, most of the modules are uh basically license license on a, how many devices are there but some of those are uh, for example mop and those are the the kind of devices which you are using there is a, some kind of a adapters below which is saying xc adapter xr adapter or, or something like that and um, so based on that but but don't worry guys this is a cx thing um means uh, we can actually put a flexible model how what kind of resources you need for support how many years and all and and based on that it actually gives but i don't want to go on a commercial discussion but but licensing perspective yes uh, the devices and some of the you can say mops or maximum mops you can say nuggets those are their predefined nuggets predefined rules those are there based on that it actually get defined you are right and the devices are a different category. These are large devices, small devices, based on that we do the calculation. There's another question. Uh, is there water analysis available? Sorry, sorry, what is that we are saying? Sorry, I missed that question. Can you repeat that? 
is there what if analysis what if analysis is available in a way that is the ban automation engine tool that tools actually does your complete igp mapping and uh, and that igp mapping if you go and click and say i want to take this device out tell me how much will be the my utilization on other link and if i this device fail or this device this link fails what will be the change in igp traffic pattern that is available from van automation engine which is part of this particular uh, tool you can say it's a umbrella and the way nso xtc we sell together this so you can actually use that you can individually purchase uh, van automation engine also but uh, 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 this is this is possible that uh, asa to firepower migration is possible we are doing lot of those so that is that is that is happening right if you wanted to do the migration module we can look at it, the migration module if you have so many of those asas uh, and 100 and 1100 something like that and r1020 also you can use a migration module and it will convert the configuration from um, and that's a, that's a kind of a service is there so somebody will help also from our side give this model to you some user will work with you understand verify the configuration which is there and you can do the migration that that is possible you can do that achievable thing any other question guys yeah yeah uh, yes this is this is clearly deployable on vm i think i got this question uh, there are three modes of deployment you can do the deployment on virtual machines. Virtual machines can be based on VMware, can be based on KVM. This can be deployed on containers. It's a completely microservices based, a Kubernetes supported, Docker supported thing. And the fourth thing is you can even deploy an open stack. The big, the, there are the, some SPs are running these on open stack. So all three are possible. How does this protect the investment made for stealth watch and assurance since few features are in this tool? Um, I think the account team, whoever Suji, the team which will get engaged with them, they will understand the what features are actually common and how we can integrate that together. They will look at the investment protection perspective also. I don't think so that's the issue. So please talk to them and, and we are help, here to help you. We will not not actually ask you for same future uh, double double um, remuneration perspective. That's, that's not that's not. Possible. For interested guys, we can uh, we can actually arrange a demo. Uh, we can arrange a demo for you guys, uh, which will actually give a very detail. We can arrange a separate demo. There is a Bangalore office. May we actually created a complete setup of this, and we can do the detailed demo to you instead of screenshot. I want to you show though everything is working fine, right? And everything is working as as we shown. So that that we can do detail. So if you guys are interested, please reach out to the Vikas, reach out to the Sujit, register your interest, and we will do the demo for you. We can define the use cases, and we can do the demo for you. I'm very happy to do the demo. Agree. Uh, I think Shashidhar, you you can um, you can open and, and uh, unmute yourself and ask your questions. No problem. Hello. 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 Yeah, Shashidhar, go ahead. Yeah. What is your question about open source? You are saying something. Is there any possibilities for any specific uh, business model? It allows open source for the customization of the programs. I have not got the question, but are you saying will you share the source code with 
with the customer is that you are asking the question yeah like that uh, like that only yeah any particular customer required uh, particular inventory type like that if they want to do and if any customization is required for them is it, is it allows so there are there the are a, there are apis to do the customization they don't need any source code for that if there is addition of particular devices and all we will do for them if there is a reason that they should have a source code then there is a procedure involved within cisco that when we share with the code with somebody we actually do some kind of agreement and protection of that then we can do that and then we can share that, that that's what that's a that's a strategic decision that which customer we should share which customer we should not share and all that so based on that that will happen but integration perspective you don't need a source code apis are there if you want to add some devices we will we will actually onboard those devices for you for example there is a new company started tomorrow which is which is um, and they producing started producing devices which we don't which we don't support then we will actually make that supported on the module if you already purchased it right so that's not yeah fine thank you yeah. any other question guys we can we can uh, integrate other oem devices uh, there are some very famous or you can say populated devices we already integrated uh, we can look at it, your devices and say which are already integrated which are uh, not integrated if those are larger in popularity there we will work with you and integrate those devices also so but but our inter we are cisco our interest with the large devices are cisco then our interest and protection is there if you have a 80 percent devices or somebody else then as a cisco as a company our interest is is lesser to that customer to a, instead of the the customer which is having 60 percent 70 percent 80 percent devices i'm frankly telling you still if the strategic deal is there and by by putting this together we will be able to uh, uh, uh help you and and convert your mindset then we then the team will take that decision when we'll do that also there is one question from mangesh i i will unmute him hey, mangesh over to you yeah mangesh go ahead uh, sorry i'm unable to unmute uh, host Mangesh, you can unmute yourself, I think. Yes, a lot of different reports are available. Performance report, fault reports, uptime reports, um, later, uh, resource consumption reports, and every router has different kind of re uh, resources. So, so um, uh, based on, as I explained that, Firewall has I, the IP sessions, right? You can do so many IP sessions with Firewall. So all those and how much is that particular uh, resources are getting uh, utilized? All that reports will be available for you. There is a some some are reports are device reports, some reports are network resource reports, or some reports are service reports. So network reports will give a network uptime, which area is getting more utilized, which devices and which particular links are getting more utilized which path is getting more utilized, which paths are not getting utilized, where you have choke up, where you, you have a clear thing, how you can do the rerouting of your, some of the traffic, all that details and reports will be available. Uh, those are available there. But um, uh, the flex, the, there is a data called as a uh, analytics module, which is flexible, which gives raw data to you. And you can run your BI module on that if you have a tableau or something like that. And that actually gives you another, you can say, a whole range of reports to you. So we give a very raw data also other than our predefined reports. You can actually fetch that data, put it in a perspective and, and show it to your management. Thank you, Mangesh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As you said, uh, when we can 
I have the live demo session of the tool how exactly it works we got the overall idea idea of the tool how the architecture is how the functionality of the tool is so, but until unless we didn't get the exact it will be good if we can have that live demo session sure, sure. We, will do, better. we will do the live demo session but uh, my the issue which we face when we are doing a live demo if i want to show the each and every module with its up to complete capacity and feature probably we need a uh, say 12 hours 18 hours or something like that so we can pick up one module two modules do one hour two hour demo session two use cases and then we can go further do another two use cases or something like that right we can do that and i agree with you but there is a lot of time required it's a huge thing if we go for each and every feature, we need a lot of time to show you, but we can show that to you. And if interested parties, we can sit together and even we carry out the previously, we were carrying out the demo when the lockdown is not there. We are calling for two days, customer to Bangalore site, and they were actually putting okay use cases together. They stay there for two days and we do the demo testing verification with customer there, right? We can do that. I agree with you. The slides doesn't give a full picture. Uh, when you see real tool working in front of you, you will have a lot better clarity. And I 100% agree with you. Any other question, guys? Yeah, Krishnaji, one of the questions is, uh, will this tool help in capacity planning? Yeah, so there are a lot of, lot of uh, you can say options or sub options uh, or sub points into capacity planning so one aspect of capacity planning is how much is the link utilization you have any particular if particular router goes down uh, how your traffic should flow and if you have a one cut fiber or two cut fiber how your paths will uh, will actually take a traffic on basis of that uh, in case of failure of one link or two links or fiber cuts or link or e or the or the router goes down how the traffic flow will happen and how much capacity you should be for for that or if you take a same pattern of capacity after three years how much you should or after six months how much you should have a capacity in a network that is the way van automation engine gives you the the way that is there right but the other aspects of capacity planning, for example, right now you have a router which is running as 50% utilization. And if the trend you see that last month it was running as a 40% utilization, slowly if you take a same trend and 70% utilization, which is our fair trial will be happening in next two months. That trend we will get from here. The port utilizations, right? You have 100 ports in particular switch. The consumption of rate of port is, is per month 10 if you go in a particular way you will reach out of port after three months and you should have another switch there that you get it from the the other aspects of inventory aspects of that there right so the first portion which i explained the traffic capacity planning has to be happened through the van automation engine other capacity planning how many line card how many port you should have which router is more getting utilized what is the CPU utilization memory utilization is very high so by by that same pattern if we go what will be the uh, this particular router you need to replace and put a bigger router there or bigger switch there that capacity planning details are available from inventory perspective if you take that report it will show you the trend and ultimately it gives the capacity planning report also to you yeah next question is it only router and switches or uh, sds gwdm no sds gwdm is not there it's a router switches and IP devices, SDM, DW, not there, not there, right now, not there. We are working on that, but right now, not there. Uh, now we are facing a problem in getting the throughput of our firewall devices level, not interface level. Let us know how this tool, yeah, this tool will get the data from why you are not getting a throughput. This will give all details of all sessions parameters which you are using and that will actually tell you that reason of uh, reason of uh, uh, probably the choke up or you can say bottleneck points wherever there is right it will give all the, that details to you
Any other question? Actually, Prashant, it gives a complete Kundalia uh, device. Uh, and by that way, you will be able to figure out that where is the problematic area. And uh, you will be able to, if you have a running this tool over the period, then you will come to know when it was running fine, what, at that time, what was the parameter and, and the, um, uh, the temperature of the device and the pet list and all, if you in a human anatomy perspective. And if you compare today when it is not working good, then and then you will able to match that while it is working good, while it is not working good, what all the things are changes. And by that way, you will be able to figure out that what is the real parameter which is actually causing the problem. Any other question, guys? You can open, uh, open, uh, unmute yourself and ask questions, no problem. You don't need to just uh, type in a window. You can even come on a call, ask the questions, discuss. Hi. Uh, Rishi Kishir, I, I do not see any question unanswered uh, unless if anyone, uh, you know, question is still unanswered, kindly raise your hand or uh, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, um, the answer is knowledge, knowledge management module. So all the RCAs for ticket, which we actually put together, we put together logs and all that goes into the database and you can search that database. So how you resolve similar issue last time or the matching issues last time that you will actually come to know. It is not showing only how you resolve, it will show you what mop you use to you used to resolve that issue, what configuration changes you have done using MOPA, and it can suggest you the you, you can do the same changes today, and it will actually give a button to you. Do you want to uh, use that same MOP? Then press this button, so it will actually ask you to remedy that also. And then it's a choice for you that you want to take that further and, and remedy it the same way or not. But yes, it has a, you can say, a knowledge database, uh, I will say we are not managing the knowledge, but whatever uh, issues we solved previously using the either manual changes done or by the changes done by MOPA or the changes done by PCLM or the any config or ICM, any configuration model, probably you remediated hundreds of routers to solve that problem. All that is getting saved into the database. And next time, if you face similar issue, not same, similar issue, you will be able to face that all. Is that is that solving your problem, Rajnish? Perfect. Okay. Yes. So, so SD WAN monitoring perspective, you have SD WAN controller. This tool is getting integrated with that, and you do have one. Um, actually window to monitor your SD WAN, your LAN devices, your yeah. WAN devices and all together. So this actually talk to the SD WAN controllers. You have already SD WAN uh, modules. Those are monitoring your SD WAN devices. It actually talk to that controllers and get those data into the one single window. So you will have a one single window, single pane of glass to monitor all types of your devices, right? So it integrates with that. Any other question, guys? What is mean by link analysis details? Can you please explain, Pawan? Open your um, mute and 
unmute yourself and please ask the question. I will try to answer. A link performance reporting is happening, right? Link performance reporting is happening. But all links, those are in a network. And I'm not talking about SD WAN. SD WAN link performance, the SD WAN controller is doing. But if the other links with those are getting managed by this tool, monitored by this tool, those all links, those are what kind of uh, traffic is going? How much is the traffic going on that? What is the QS class classification on that particular link? What is the trend of a link? Of how that link performs over the month or the period? Uh, how much uptime, downtime? Uh, what all the CRC errors, point errors, packet top errors, all that we capture. And if you ask me, show me the Kundali of this link, we show that particular, particular details of that particular link. So per link basis, all these details are available. Is that answered your question, Pawan, or no? Pawan? Yeah, good. Very good. Okay. Any other question, guys? We have four or five minutes. Anybody's question unanswered, guys? Please, please raise your hand if your question is unanswered. Any questions? Any further questions? Vikas, Sujit, over to you guys. I think uh, we can wind this up now. Uh, thank you, Krishnaji, and uh, rest of the team. And thank you, audience, for your uh, patient listening. We spent close to around two hours. And as I promised to you in the beginning, um, hopefully you found this to be meaningful and of interest. Uh, of course, there would be a survey, and uh, it would have all the links for you to reach out to us as well in case you are interested to know more about it. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.